Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another Boomtown webinar for the month of August 2013. Today, Sue and Erica will be explaining some of the ever-evolving dynamics in the field of search engine optimization as they present their webinar on partnerships, the new SEO. Sue? Thanks, Andrew. Um, okay, so I'm going to do a screen share, and hopefully you guys can all see this. Made a little PowerPoint up to, to talk about what Eric and I were kind of discussing before the meeting. Um, so the first thing that happened over the last couple of months was that personal search and, and the big penguin update um, have thrown a, a big loop to SEOs and we've had to change the way we do things. But also the analytics tools that Google, Google offers have uh, really increased and they were, were able to beca become a lot more strategic in our SEO. And one of the ways that we've been able to solve the problem of getting links that are acceptable to Google but also drive traffic and, and e-commerce to, you know, or money to our clients is to look for partners. And what we want to do is turn our link building efforts into lead generation efforts. Um, so here, we're, we're, this particular webinar, Eric and I are just going to share a couple things that uh, we're going to keep it short. It's going to be only about 10 minutes, and we're going to share a couple of ideas that have worked for one particular client, an e-commerce medical equipment provider that is one of our clients. And I'm just going to go through a couple of things that seem to be working well um, where SEO is really turning into lead generation. So first, I want to talk a little bit about social sharing and how important that is to the ranking factors now. And specifically, I want to talk about Facebook, Google+, and YouTube for this particular client. And then Erica is going to talk about um, blogging. She's going to talk specifically about brand advocates and then contributing, becoming a, um, a trusted contributor to certain blogs. And I'm also going to, right after I talk about the social stuff, I'm also going to talk about building email lists and using contests and um, pay-per-click campaigns to, to build email lists. So first thing I want to talk about is um, the fact that social sharing um, is becoming so much more important. Uh, it's a big ranking factor and that a lot of companies, there's a big disparagence in the way brands are using social sharing, but more and more brands are starting to use it. And, um, and the reason why is because these people that are on social media are much more engaged, as I'm going to show you in the next couple slides. And so it's worthwhile for them. The return on investment is there now for um, participating in social media. So one of the first things, one of the best social media tools for e-commerce anyway. Um, in this particular webinar we're talking about e-commerce so is Facebook. So we looked at our client and had he had the client had very few Facebook likes when we started this. Um, um, it was in June that we decided to start this and we I think they had maybe like 18 likes in their entire Facebook campaign. So over a 30-day period, what we did was we ran some ads in um, Facebook groups that were specific to the medical devices that this particular client sells. And we were able to, with a very low amount of spend, $1,200, we were able to get almost 2,000 likes. We, we got more than 1,500 likes. And of those likes, I'm just showing you an analytics chart right here. There were, in that particular month of June, there were 367 visits to the website. And those people that came from Facebook, they not the the way we got them to um, to like us on Facebook was we offered to give away a very small piece of equipment for free. But I would say only about 30% of the people who liked us actually asked for the free piece of equipment and but of those people that came from the Facebook like over to the um, the website during the month of June they spent more than seven thousand almost eight thousand dollars 
um, which more than made up for our spend, our pay-per-click spend in Facebook. So that's just one example of using a like campaign and creating this engaged audience. Um, so then just looking a little bit for closer into Facebook in the next couple weeks after the campaign, we didn't really do anything except to post their email newsletters. You can see there were three newsletters that we posted to the email campaign and an additional $300 was generated just from, you know, d just posting, you know, a couple little blog posts um, related to specials on the Facebook page. And so what we've decided now is that we should do a lot more Facebook specials and promotions because these people are very engaged with, with very little effort on our part. We try the same thing now with Google+. Plus. And what's happening there is, again, we had very, very few followers in Google+. Plus. I think we had like two followers in Google+, Plus before we started this. This was a couple weeks ago. Um, and now we have around 130 followers. But they've already spent $500 this month, and we haven't even really done anything except, again, just post some email specials and engage with some of them in, in question and answers. So we know that these these folks are also really engaged people and we want to start doing some campaigns to target them. So and we're looking at YouTube now um, because what we see on search is that a lot of times we'll see uh, in the ranking results we'll see a YouTube video popping up for some of the um, some of the words that you know the client wants to come up on so it makes sense to show a YouTube video because what we found is that the YouTube people who watch a YouTube video are much more likely, I forget the statistic right now, but more than 50% more likely to buy than somebody who didn't, who came in and didn't watch a YouTube video. So we really want to show the YouTube video and get people to click on that. And what we did here was um, we're running a pay-per-click campaign to get people to click on the videos and just optimized the videos about three days ago, optimized 10 of them, and we're starting to see people coming in and buying already um, after having just visited the YouTube video. Also, I put an annotation in the video that um, points to a link that I put in the video description where you can purchase the product. So I'm trying that as, an, as a, a way of you know, getting a one click right to the site from YouTube. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about why we want to grow the email list. This graphic pretty much explains what happens when our client sends out an email blast. Um, it's in this particular month, this month of August, it was 17% of the total revenue for the client. Um, we sent three email blasts out in this month. One was over the weekend. We sent it on a Friday and also on a Saturday. So you see the double the double little pop there. Um, but the the email return on investment is is crucial for this client and also we also trying to get them into our mobile app. So once we get them into the mobile app, that's also a really good way of keeping the client, the people who are connected to us engaged. Um, and one of the ways that we used to grow the email list was to use pay-per-click ads on social media um, because we could connect right into groups of people who were very interested in it. Um, this was really inexpensive and you can see the the growth in in that particular um, using, using that particular way of growing an email list. So now I'm going to turn it over to Erica and um, let me just see how I do that. I think I can stop okay. screen sharing okay. from myself and just let you do it. All right, let me just share my screen. Okay, hang on. Sorry, it's very slow. If you want me to, okay. Yeah, would you mind sharing yours again? I'm sorry, it's just not working. It's going to be really small, but there you go. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Okay, um, one popular partnership solution is the use of a brand personality or brand advocate. 
A brand advocate is somebody who inspires trust in the brand that they're promoting and in your audience about your company. They do not necessarily have to be celebrities. They can be friends, employees, or guest bloggers. A brand advocate's purpose is to build a connection between your products and your audience through their online image. Often, brand advocates provide social media support. They'll post to you or in their Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest accounts. They'll speak about your brand at social events. They might hand out promotional flyers at strategic locations, um, do guest blogging in detail about your products, and run online contests for you too. They do these things often just in exchange for your products. Your brand advocate's dialogue with your target audience creates the opportunity to build a relationship between your customer and your brand. The best brand advocates are those who have actually experienced your product, including respected bloggers, small publishers, and others with a significant online following. Often they are people within your customer base, not your employees. Selecting the right brand advocate can help maximize the opportunity for building up your brand. Okay, please change slides, Sue. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, becoming a contributing author is another effective partnership strategy. Boomtown reached out to an individual who had an engaged online audience for blogging, and we did a three part blogging series over the course of a month that took approximately five, six hours of our writer's time. This blog post significantly increased traffic and brought in more than $10,000 worth of revenue for our client who sells medical equipment online. This was effective as our contributing blog post reached people who were directly engaged in the product and we were hitting our targeted audience directly. Okay, next slide. Essentially, personalized search and penguin have changed link building, and online partnerships make more sense than getting thousands of links. Reaching out to social media audiences who are engaged in becoming a recognized expert online helps convert visitors to customers. Offline partners can also become online partners as well. Thank you guys for watching, and in the coming months, we'll discuss other partnership strategies that have worked for our clients, so please stay tuned.